Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining this session. Um, I'm Pierre Villan. I'm going to uh, do another uh, live session about Apache NiFi. Uh, before we uh, go through it, let me uh, start with some slides because we are uh, doing a new format today. So I just want to make sure that everyone is aware of what we are using today. So let me share my screen. And uh, let me start with uh, a few slides. Um, so first of all, um, you can ask your questions uh, via the Q&A widget you should see on your screen. Um, I have uh, Dan Shevelson and Tim, Sma Tim Span with me today. So uh, if you ask questions, we will uh, try our best to uh, give you some answers. Um, when you uh, exit, when you have the exit survey, click yes, and we will get in touch with you and uh, we will get back to some additional resources you may want to watch after this session. Um, if you joined us uh, using LinkedIn, Twitter, or YouTube, uh, and you want to participate to the poll questions we are going to ask during this session, please use the link in the chat. Otherwise, you won't be able to answer the questions. OK. Um, before we get into the demo, just a few slides about myself and what NiFi is, just to make sure that we are all on the same page. Uh, so I'm Pierre Villan. I'm the product manager uh, at Cloudera in charge of all the products around NiFi, uh, including NiFi registry, MiNiFi, edge management, uh, and, and so forth. Uh, I'm involved in the Apache NiFi project uh, since five years now. Uh, I'm both a committer and PMC member in the, in the Apache community. Uh, before joining Cloudera as a product manager for NiFi, I was at Google and before that, Hortonworks. Um, if you want to get some news about uh, NiFi, when we release new features, when we are doing some uh, exciting stuff, publishing new uh, blog posts, uh, you can subscribe on Twitter. Uh, that's the only thing I tweet about. Uh, before I go into the technical details, uh, we have two ways for you to get involved uh, with Cladera. There is uh, the community page where you can ask questions. Uh, we have a lot of our um, um, people at Cladera uh, answering your questions there. And there is also a lot of meetups we are uh, scheduling around NiFi, but also a lot of different subjects. So if you want to uh, be aware of uh, the upcoming meetups, please uh, look at this page as well. Uh, so what is Apache NiFi? I will go very quickly through the slides because uh, there is a good chance you already uh, looked at uh, the, um, um, the live session before uh, and uh, you already know all of this. So I will go through, uh, very quickly through the slides just to make sure uh, we are on the same page. So NiFi is really the tool you want to use when you have some data you want to move around. Uh, that's really what NiFi is about. You have data and you want to get it uh, in the right place, in the right format, at the right time. That's really what NiFi is about. And then we have the MiNiFi agents that you can use for, for edge management uh, and, and a collection of data uh, at the edge. So uh, that's our solution to answer the first uh, my problem for the data, how to collect efficiently the data and just collect what you need. So NiFi is uh, a drag and drop, no code UI uh, that you can use to design your flows. Uh, and, and then uh, you are up and running and you can move your data, process it, uh, acquire it from, uh, from a source, uh, do some transformations and deliver it into a, a destination. Uh, we provide hundreds of processors to connect with uh, almost any kind of systems you can think of. Uh, also, NiFi is by definition extensible, so anything you need, uh, you can extend NiFi. You can build your own processors, your own components, uh, in case you want to build a specific feature that is not available by uh, in NiFi out of the box. Um, and then uh, for the session today, I will be talking a lot about the NiFi registry, which is another tool. Uh, that you want to use in combination with NiFi when you want to um, move your flows from one environment to another. So when you are uh, using NiFi in the industry, uh, in the enterprise, you want to move your flow from a development cluster where you are trying things out, and then you want to um, send this 
to send this uh, into a production cluster. So that's what we are going to focus on today. Um, just a quick word about uh, the Cloudera products. So uh, the Cloudera data platform, what this is, uh, this is really um, a platform where we are putting together a lot of components in a, a consistent and coherent way. Uh, so we will be focusing on data flow today, uh, which is including uh, uh, NiFi, Kafka, and Flink. Um, and we will be uh, talking about NiFi exclusively today. Um, on top of that, we have um, what we call SDX, which is uh, a common layer that is uh, shared across all of your components to manage security, data governance, uh, lineage, all of this in a consistent way in a single place. Um, and all of this can run on your data centers on premises or in the cloud, uh, on containers. That's um, really a lot of options you can use. And we are running uh, in all the main cloud providers. Today, for the demonstration, I will be uh, using a CDP in public cloud. Uh, it will be running on AWS. Uh, but just so you know, uh, since December, so it's like one month ago, uh, we added uh, NiFi on CDP Public Cloud uh, on Google Cloud. So you now NiFi is available on all the three main cloud providers. So if you are a Google Cloud customer, uh, reach out to us if you want to try NiFi on Google Cloud. Uh, in, in Cloudera Public Cloud, we have this concept of data hub clusters, uh, which is a very easy way for you to start uh, specialized clusters. Uh, which are independent from each other, and you can uh, uh, select the components you want on each data hub cluster, which is really great uh, for really uh, isolating your workloads and using the components you want, um, uh, still with this common uh, SDX layer to manage authorizations uh, and, and so on. That's what we will be using today. Um, very quickly, uh, before this session, uh, like since uh, the last two weeks, I think uh, we asked on social medias uh, what we wanted to uh, see today. Uh, well, I'm happy to say that uh, uh, we have, um, let's say, an evenly balanced uh, set of answers. Uh, so I will try to uh, go as soon as possible to the, let's say, real technical details with the scripts um, and all. But since it's evenly balanced, I will also uh, spending some time on the parameters and um, and how the NIFA registry is working and how we go from uh, manual deployment from one environment to another uh, to the uh, full automation of uh, of the deployments. So um, that's it uh, for uh, the slides. And before we go into uh, the um, before we go into the live demo. There is a first question we want to ask you. So uh, hopefully on your screen, you should see uh, the first poll question, uh, which is really about, uh, are you today using the NIFA registry uh, in your environments? Um, that's an interesting question for us because uh, this is really the tool we want you to use when, it's, uh, when it comes to move a flow definition from one environment to another. So I will just uh, leave you a, a few seconds to answer the questions. Uh, and then, Dan, uh, if you have the answers uh, and the results, please let me know. Yeah, man, just letting them come in. Uh, hi, everybody. Good to be back doing more Demo Jam. Uh, I am not actually on a beach in New Zealand. Uh, I would just like to be. And while you're giving poll results, I think that that's a reasonable place to wish I was, considering it's nighttime in London and it's cold. Mm. A few more seconds here. Let's see what we get. Do, 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 do. I feel like I should be like wearing a fancy outfit and do like, you know, but wait, there's more gestures. Something like that, Pierre, you know, just get fancy. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. OK, um, it looks like we've got some good answers here. So the results are. Uh, do you use NIFI registry deploy flows in production? Um, about 27% are saying they do not use NIFI in production of our callers, so but just under a third. And then uh, of the people who use NIFI, we've got about 40% no and about 32% yes. Okay. 
well, hopefully after this session, you will be using NIFA in production and you will be using the NIFA registry. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, thank you, Dan. So let's get started. Uh, let me share my screen again and let's go into uh, the demo. Uh, so here. Okay, so um, you should see my screen now. Um, cool. So uh, this is what it looks like when you start an environment uh, in CDB public cloud. Um, so right now you can see here that I have my uh, cluster running in AWS. Uh, this part at the top is uh, what we call the uh, data lake or SDX layer that I was talking about where we have uh, Apache Atlas for managing metadata, lineage of your data and so on. Uh, Ranger for the authorizations, data catalog for uh, looking at your data sets, uh, data quality and, 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 and things like that. And then, as I said, we have the, the concept of uh, data hubs clusters, uh, which are specialized uh, clusters. Um, so, uh, for for this, this demonstration, all of my clusters are running in the same uh, cloud environment because it makes my life easier. Uh, but you could think of a different model where you have your uh, development environment where you where you have also your development data hubs clusters and then uh, another dedicated environment for production. In this case, I use the same environment and then I have. Uh, dev data hubs clusters. Uh, so I have one for my file, which is named uh, dev dash cluster. I have one dev cluster for Kafka, and then I have the two same clusters uh, for production. So here I have four clusters, two running in iFi, two running in Kafka. That's really what this is about. Uh, and then uh, in each of the NiFi clusters, so if I go into one, um, we can uh, see a lot of information about what is being deployed in this uh, NIFI cluster. Uh, so in this case, uh, I have uh, what we call a gateway node. Uh, that's where my NIFI registry is going to run. And then we have the NIFI nodes. Uh, in this case, I, I have a, a three nodes cluster. Uh, so then we can access uh, the NIFI UI, the NIFI registry UI. You can also access Cloud Era Manager in charge of this uh, specific cluster. Um, and you have that for all of the Data Hub clusters. So if I go back to my uh, Data Hubs clusters, you can do the same for the, uh, the other dev clusters and production clusters. So if I look at the Kafka cluster, in this case, uh, it's quite similar. We have uh, a master node where we have the schema registry, which is what we use to manage uh, schema versioning uh, and so on. And we have a, a, a streams messaging manager, which is the tool we, we provide uh, for uh, monitoring and manage, uh, yeah, monitoring and supervising your, your Kafka clusters. Um, that's where you can also easily create delete topics and, and so on. Uh, so all of this is, is running on the master node, and then we have the three uh, broker nodes where we have the Kafka brokers. Um, okay, so before I uh, move on to the NIFI UI and uh, we start designing a flow, uh, I want to quickly move to another tab, but uh, apparently my sharing is uh, limited. Yeah, okay. So now you should see a new tab, hopefully. Um, uh, so this is uh, a very old blog post um, uh, I published two years ago, uh, almost three years ago now, uh, um, about what we are going to talk about. And I want to stop on this uh, because this is something that, this is a discussion I have uh, with our customers quite frequently. Uh, so there are two ways to look at how the NIFA registry can be used to uh, move flows from one environment to another. Uh, the first architecture is one NIFA registry, which is being used for 
um, as a common piece for all of the uh, your NiFi clusters. Uh, so you would be in your development cluster, you will be uh, creating your flow, developing your flow, adding processors, doing whatever you want to, uh, uh, to meet your use case requirements. And then you would uh, commit and version your NiFi flow into the NiFi registry. And then the sorry to interrupt, buddy, but uh, your screen share has dropped out. Do you want to try that again? Uh, yep. Thanks. Uh, let me. I'll let you know when try. it pops back up. Yeah. Let me try something else. Yeah. Should be better. Hopefully. Yes, we have it loaded. Okay. Well, thank you for that. Um, so, yeah. So I was talking about the first schema. So hopefully uh, this makes more sense now. Um, so one NIFI registry um, shared by all the environments, only the development cluster is allowed to write in the NIFI registry while the staging and production clusters are just checking out the version of your flow to run it, to perform some testing, and then to deploy it finally in the production for uh, uh, real life use cases and in production. Uh, that's the that's the architecture we at Cloudera recommend. Um, consider NIFI registry just like a, a Ansible Tower or Jenkins or a, a, a GitHub repository or something like that. Uh, this is something that is shared across multiple clusters and you have the right policies to make sure that write access is uh, coming only from the dev and then you are just checking out uh, from the other environments. That's, that's the um, easiest architecture. That's where you will be uh, um, benefiting from most of the features from the NIFA registry. Uh, there is another option though, uh, which is having a NIFA registry for each cluster and then you have uh, APIs to move things from one NIFA registry to another. Um, that's another option. Uh, uh, it, sometimes it makes sense. Obviously, uh, this makes uh, all of the operations a bit uh, harder. Uh, but um, if you go through this blog post, um, I explain how this works. However, for this demo, I will be uh, using a single NIFA registry uh, which is used for both my development cluster and my production cluster. Okay, um, so if I go back here, uh, so if you remember, I have two Kafka clusters, two NiFi clusters, uh, one dev uh, for each, one production for each. So I chose, but this is really up to you, it doesn't really uh, matter in this uh, demonstration. I chose to have uh, the NIFA registry, to use the NIFA registry, which is deployed in the production cluster. Uh, and I'm also going to use the schema registry, which is running in the production cluster. So all of my uh, uh, NIFA flows will be using the NIFA registry from prod and the schema registry from prod. So that's what we are going to use. So if I go to uh, my NiFi pod cluster and I open the NiFi registry UI, um, I will quickly show you what it looks like. So I can close this time. So uh, that's that's the NiFi registry UI right now. There is not much, uh, but basically here you have the list of all the flows you version in the NiFi registry. There is just one I played with before. Um, but we will start with a new one during the demo, but this is uh, something you can uh, look at. You can look at the versions, uh, you can do some actions, and then uh, you have also some uh, administration features uh, in case you have uh, the right authorizations. So you can uh, create new buckets, uh, you can manage uh, users and policies, um, even though in this case, we uh, we want you to do it from uh, Apache Ranger when you are using uh, NIFI in public cloud. So that's really uh, everything you can do in the NIFI registry UI. Uh, that's a nice UI. You can see the history of the changes uh, on, on your flow, uh, but that's pretty much it. Um, 
we are going to add new features uh, uh, this year in the Knife R registry, and I will come back to that later uh, if time permits. But that's really it about the Knife R registry. What is really interesting in, is the integration of Knife R with the Knife R registry and how uh, all of this worked, uh, works together. So let's go to the Knife R UI of my uh, dev cluster. So first of all, uh, well, uh, sorry. I said dev cluster, so I need to go to my dev cluster. Here we go, NiFi. So I'm uh, authenticated uh, with my own identity uh, on this dev cluster. And I just want to uh, quickly mention that when you are uh, managing a lot of NiFi clusters, uh, there is um, a very small feature uh, that allows you to write some custom code, uh, custom custom text. Sorry, uh, here, uh, which can be helpful uh, in case you want to be sure you are on the right cluster at the right time and you are not doing anything stupid. Hopefully, you have the right authorizations anyway, so you can't do anything stupid in production. But just in case, uh, you have a, a property in NiFi that allows you to. Uh, give some custom text here, uh, which is useful. We are also uh, adding new features uh, as we speak to make uh, this even uh, more obvious, let's say. Um, so yeah, so uh, how does it work with the NIFAR registry? So uh, really what you can version in the NIFAR registry is a process group. Uh, so the first step is really have a process group uh, so you drag and drop a process group. You say, well, this is my use case. So uh, demo jam uh, use case, uh, that's it. You create a process group. Uh, usually, anyway, you are going to create a process group per flow, per use case. You want to uh, deploy on your NiFi cluster. So this is really what we want to do anyway. So in this case, um, uh, I, I create uh, this process group and I can go inside and start uh, designing my flow. Uh, this is what I'm going to do in a sec. Um, and then, so, well, let's, let's start with uh, something very simple. Uh, I won't uh, show you all the design because that's not what we want to talk about. But uh, so let's say, okay, I have my uh, listen HTTP, um, then I want to, I'm going to uh, receive receive some JSON data, and then I want to do some enrichment based on the IP uh, that I receive uh, in, in my data. So I will be doing uh, some uh, geo-enriched uh, IP record processor. So for every IP address, I will be uh, associating a city uh, based on a, a database uh, that you can uh, find on the internet to uh, link uh, an IP to uh, to uh, a city, country, etc. So, um, sorry, here uh, success. So you can you can start uh, designing your flow. Um, you can do that. Uh, it works well. Uh, and and then when you are happy with it, or maybe it's time for your break, or maybe it's the end of the day, you want to make sure this is saved, and you can start from here uh, tomorrow, or you want to make this available to another team. Uh, working on the same use case or a similar one. So what you want to do is uh, you can right click here and uh, you have um, a version menu here uh, that allows you to start version control. You can also do it from the process group if you want. Uh, it's, it, it may be a bit easier. So here, version start version control. So your NiFi in public cloud um, is uh, directly configured to uh, exchange with the NIFI registry. By default, the NIFI registry uh, from dev will be used for the NIFI cluster in the dev cluster. So what I did is to go in the settings of my NIFI cluster, uh, and instead of using my NIFI registry from the dev cluster, I just changed uh, this to use the endpoint uh, for my production NIFI registry instance. That's it, uh, nothing else. Um, so now, instead of using the, the NIFI registry that is created for you in the dev cluster, I'm using the one in the production cluster. Uh, so version control, start version control, it will be 
uh, asking the NIFAR registry about what are the buckets in which you can uh, save your flow. Uh, so buckets are just kind of directories if you want to organize uh, flows by some kind of uh, business units in your company or uh, by uh, functionality or uh, by teams or whatever. Uh, uh, buckets are where you can also uh, set uh, permissions. So you want also to keep this in mind on how you want to organize your flows in the NIFA registry. Uh, in this case, I'm just using the, the default bucket, which is uh, the one that is created for you by default. I'm going to uh, name my flow. Um, so um, uh, demo jam use case uh, flow description. This is uh, the flow for the demo jam. And this is uh, initial version with nothing much, with nothing. Uh, that's it. So um, here you can see now that uh, the flow is versioned in the NIFA registry. And what we have on the screen in, is the latest version. Now, if I go back into it and I start doing some changes, uh, so I start, I don't know, configuring some processors, uh, saying on which processor, uh, sorry, which port I want to listen for my, H my HTTP request, uh, I, I configure things uh, and then I will be, uh, I don't know, um, publishing my data to uh, Kafka. So I will be using the published Kafka record processor. Um, uh, found here. So I did some changes, and now you can see that instead of the uh, the green logo we had before, uh, there is this gray uh, uh, the, this gray logo where it says that you have changes locally, and you can commit a new version if you want to. So let's say I want to commit a new version. You can right click, uh, say commit local changes. You can also, uh, if you want, revert your local changes. Uh, you can list the local changes. Uh, so for instance, here, uh, I added, um, I configured the property listening port for my listen HTTP processor. Um, uh, I changed the value for a content listener in my listen HTTP processor, etc. So you have the list of changes. You can revert changes. Uh, in this case, I want to commit my local changes. So it's going to create version two. So I did uh, publish Kafka uh, processor. Okay, and, and that's it. Uh, so you have a new version. So now if I go back here in the NIFAR registry and I refresh that, uh, you will see a new flow available here. if my connection is fast enough. OK, so here I have my new flow, which is also in the default bucket. Uh, and I see that I have two versions. Uh, first version created two minutes ago, uh, second version created right now. Uh, there is my, uh, my identity, so I know who made uh, changes on the flows uh, and so on. So, OK, my flow is version. Uh, that's great. Now, uh, this is really cool. But uh, everything you configure in your NiFi flow, so let me go back to uh, the NiFi UI. For some reasons, my Chrome brother is really slow. Anyway, uh, so. Uh, when you when you uh, create a flow, uh, you are going to configure a lot of things, uh, and most likely for the source and the destination. I mean the source and yeah source and and destination processors. Since you are most likely going to use processors interfacing with external systems, uh, the the configuration you are going to set is most likely going to change from the development cluster to the production cluster. Um, that's, that's really uh, something to keep in mind, uh, because for instance here, when you are going to configure your uh, Kafka processor, you are going to give a list of Kafka brokers. Obviously, this is going to change between my dev cluster and my production cluster. 
uh, maybe you are going to use a different topic name. Uh, there is also, uh, if you are using a, a service account, maybe the service account and the associated password is going to change from dev to production. So all of this, um, you don't want to manage all of this uh, directly in the processor. Uh, since probably one or two years now, we added uh, the concept of parameters. Um, and before I go into the explanations of what param parameters are, um, there is a poll question for you uh, that we can go to right now uh, to uh, see if uh, what 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 is your experience with uh, uh, the parameters in NiFi? And we're back again. Hi. Hey, Tim. Yo, what is up? All right, new poll. Do you leverage the parameters of NiFi to ease flow promotion between environments? And like Pierre said, PR parameters are fantastic. They integrate much better with registry, uh, much more portable, uh, much more easier to use across uh, the various contexts and process groups you're working with. You can import and export a lot easier. Uh, and you do not have to do any XML wrangling. And I personally cannot be bothered with XML anymore. I don't know about you. I'm just a bit sick of it. Yeah, agree. Yeah. <laughs> Um, just waiting for results to come in as we as we chat away. There we go. It's starting to get some results. Um, I am seeing quite similar results to last time, which is interesting. So, um, and they're still coming in, but at this point, about a quarter of the audience is like, nope, never use parameters, which. It is a recentish feature to NiFi. You know, it's. I think we introduced it around uh, the the one ten release, one eleven release. So it's more recent. Yeah. Um, and then uh, about a third of the audience is using parameters. Excellent job keeping up with them features. And then about forty percent overall says no. Okay. So Makes I think sense. we've got some good some good adoption considering the feature is not that. Uh, not that uh, well aged yet. Yep, sounds good. Yeah, cool. Okay, uh, let's go back to the demo. And since I see that we are already uh, half an hour in, I will try to uh, go as quickly as I can because good, there is a lot of good stuff and. I want to make sure we cover everything. OK, uh, so hopefully you should see my screen again. Yep, we've got your uh, screen back. Cool, thanks. Uh, so uh, instead of watching me uh, creating a flow, let's uh, switch gears and go directly to the flow I created before. And just let me do some changes uh, because I was expecting to do that uh, in front of you, but uh, okay. So let me remove that here, here. Okay. So found that found. Okay. So uh, this is the flow I want to uh, to show you. So um, so let's let's imagine that. Uh, that's my first version of the flow that I consider as production ready. So what, what is uh, the flow doing? Uh, that's really simple. So let me stop that just to uh, go through this uh, flow very quickly. So I have a listen HTTP processor, which is, well, listening for HTTP requests. I'm going to, from my laptop, send some data on, on this processor. This will be uh, some random JSON data. Let me start that right now. Okay, so we should uh, hopefully see some data coming in. So if I uh, list queue, look at the data. Um, this is uh, JSON data, random JSON data, where we have some uh, ID, name, email, and I, uh, an IP address. So it could be, I don't know, from uh, logs, uh, from a website, uh, whatever. Uh, just random data where we have an IP address. 
uh, this is what really we, we want to focus on today. Uh, and then there is this uh, geo-enriched IP record processor, which is really about looking at the IP address, looking in the in a mapping database, and giving you a CT for uh, for each of the IPs. So let me start that as well. Uh, and now if I look at the data, there is a new field uh, that came in, uh, which is the CT. I also changed from JSON to Avro, which is uh, uh, very useful if you want to uh, have smaller data sets. Uh, so here we can see that for the IP address, uh, this is the city of Columbus. We have uh, some IP address we cannot resolve because I'm using a free uh, online available database, uh, which is not very uh, uh, accurate. So for some IP address, I don't have any CT, but that's fine. So San Jose, Dorchester, uh, uh, Charlton, et cetera. Uh, it, it gives, uh, I mean, when I, I see all of these uh, cities, I really want to travel again, but uh, anyway. Uh, so we have the cities, that's great. And then we can send the data into this uh, Kafka processor and I can start, that's it. Uh, and the data is made available to downstream applications that will be consuming from Kafka. So that's that's really what my um, what my flow is, and I want to. I mean, I feel like this is good enough uh, to go in production. Uh, this will be my first version, so um, I will commit this. Well, in this case, because I did uh, a lot of stuff before today, this is version 17. But we we don't really care. Let's say okay, this is uh, uh, the first version uh, ready to go in production. Okay. Uh, so before we, we switch to the production cluster and I show you uh, how it would look like if we are doing uh, things manually, uh, let's look into this concept of parameters because uh, as we said, this is really a key concept and you, you should use it. Um, even if you are not using the NIFA registry, uh, to be honest, uh, um, you want to use the parameters. Uh, it's nicely integrated with the NIFA registry but if for some reasons you don't want to use the NIFA registry, uh, please use the parameters anyway. Uh, so if we look at the configuration of the processor, uh, we see some properties where the configuration is with the uh, with um, uh, with this format, and there is a name, uh, and I, have, I think I have a few uh, processors. Uh, so in this processor, uh, I'm also creating a parameter uh, which is referencing where my file is, uh, this max main database file. Uh, in the publish Kafka record processor, I have the brokers, I have the topic name. Uh, I also have uh, the service accounts I'm using. But very importantly, there is also a parameter which is used for sensitive values. In, th in this case, the password associated to my user. So this is one of the, the big difference with what we provided before the parameters existed, uh, what we called before the variables. Uh, variables were uh, a very limited feature, only uh, something you could only use where expression language uh, is available in NiFi. Uh, so it was kind of limited in terms of scope and you couldn't use it for sensitive properties. In this case, uh, you can use parameters everywhere uh, including for the sensitive properties. So it's it's really uh, powerful and, and very useful. Uh, and I'm also using it in the controller services. Uh, sorry, uh, if I look at all the controller services I have for my process group, uh, I am also using parameters here. So for instance, for the uh, schema registry, um, sorry, one sec here, configure. So here for the Cladera schema registry, uh, where I store the schema of the data I'm dealing with, uh, I'm using a parameter to also reference where the schema registry is running. Uh, here again, I have my uh, service account because of my really bad internet connections, and I apologize for that, uh, the properties are duplicated. Uh, this is just a UI issue because I have a very bad connection. Uh, let me try again, but yeah, there is, 
Yeah, much better. Uh, sorry about that. So yeah, so there is uh, the service account, and again, the the passport associated to my service account. Um, so well, that's nice, but you you may ask, well, where are these parameters? So if you want to define parameters, there is this concept of parameter context that you can define here. If you go in the hamburger menu, you have a menu here, parameter context, uh, where you can go and you can create a parameter context. A parameter, a parameter context is really a set of key values uh, that you are going to use in your flow definition uh, to externalize uh, the parameters you want. Uh, and you can map a parameter context to uh, one or many process groups, but not the other way around. So uh, for one process group, you can have only one single uh, parameter context. This is something that we are going to uh, make better this year. But just so you know, right now, uh, you can only attach one parameter context to a process group. So basically, you would create parameter context for each one of your use cases. And then if you go to the process group uh, and you go to uh, configure here, you can uh, select the parameter context you want to attach to this, uh, uh, to this uh, process group. So in this case, I'm uh, attaching my parameter context, uh, GYP enrich. Uh, so uh, before I go to the production cluster, uh, I'm going to clean a little bit what I did before. Uh, let's, uh, let's stop for just uh, three or four minutes, uh, team, and then do, do you see any, any interesting questions uh, you want to uh, answer right now? Yeah, we got a bunch of good stuff coming in. Um, there's quite a few people on. Uh, we're not only in the, the live Q&A system, uh, which is one of the links we sent out, but we're also restreaming on the YouTubes, uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, places, places, places that people go. Um, so <laughs> questions we got. And we've got Tim back. Hey, Tim. Now All right. So um, there's a couple of good ones here. I'll pick up while you're doing that, Pierre. Um, first one is... Um, just talking about the parameter context you just had, I see uh, where do we set different parameter values for different environments? So, so while Pierre is setting that up, basically parameter contexts are uh, set in each NiFi cluster. So each environment has its own local collection of parameter contexts, but those can be pushed and pulled via the API. So you could uh, store them elsewhere you could have a you know a configuration management database that you use. You could have secret stores that you want to pull passwords and things out of and then populate into that particular NiFi environment. And then obviously you may have uh, parameters that change between um, dev and prod for database names and IPs and, and all that sort of business. So you would uh, push those in and out of the particular NiFi environment using the REST interface or via the GUI like uh, Pierre is showing you here. Uh, and there's various ways it means to do that. Um, we'll probably go into a bit more detail on that later in the demo. But uh, if you want me to speak a bit more on that detail or a particular question you have around that, just pop it back in that uh, question chat. Uh, the next one I will grab, just mark that one as answers so I don't lose track, is um, somebody is saying they've been through the blog that Pierre mentioned. They've got different NIFO registries in each of their environments. So they've gone with that architecture. And they're wondering about the APIs around flow development and should they create a Python script that does that for their Jenkins pipeline? Uh, I have good news and I have better news about that. The good news is I've already written the script for you. Uh, we will probably go into it later in the session as well. So one of my various hats is that I maintain the Python client for NiFi, which Pierre is helpfully bringing up. Uh, he planned on talking about it later, so I'm just jumping in a bit early here. Um, so I contributed that and I maintain it. Um, there are all of the Python methods you might need around this. There is a handy top level library called versioning, another one for parameters. But there's even a script which walks through the process that uh, Pierre is doing right now. It's called the FDLC demo. We'll have a look at that as well. So uh, there are absolutely methods available for you to just lift and use to do all of that in Python. And if you're feeling fancy, um, the interface is actually a published Swagger spec. So you can choose your own preferential language, make your own client, go to town as well. Uh, here goes pretty popular with the kids. 
Um, I haven't had time to implement it in Go yet, but we're talking about it in the community actually, because there's a lot of work happening in the community around Kubernetes operators. Most of those are written in Go. So uh, you should be able to find one of those as well. Uh, I grabbed two. Tim, do you want to grab one or Pierre, do you want to grab things back? Well, Tim, let's, let's have one from you. Well, I'll pick an easy one. <laughs> uh, there was an interesting one uh, that I saw about exporting uh, parameter context when you want to move to a uh, production instance. Um, what's, there's a little bit of a difference here between parameter context and parameters, because you'll set up the parameter context in different areas, and then you'll want to load your parameters. And like you mentioned, we can do that very easily with the NiFi command line interface or with the REST API. I posted an article in several of the places that shows you how easy that is. It's, you know, one or two steps. You get those files in. If you want to change them, you change them, push them back. That That is very easy to do. That covers, uh, can you update parameters from data? Uh, I don't think so. That, that might from be like NiFi data. Um, technically, you can, but you won't have them updated by the time the data finishes processing through. So in theory, you could be a little bit fancy, and you could have a Python script that executes inside NiFi using the execute script context that takes the content of the flow file and then runs a parameter update command. Uh, to update the parameters on the flow that the data is flowing through. The problem with that is that the flow gets paused while the parameter contents are updated and then restarted, so that flow file would have moved past that point. But if your design is that those flow files come into one process group, okay, now I'm being mental, Tim. I know you're going to laugh at me. If those flow files came into initial process group so the data was analyzed and checked, and then you used parameters that you extracted from that in a second process group that you pass them to, that would totally work. Not that I've done that, but that's Is a, that a good idea. idea. No, it's not a yeah. good idea, but it's funny. That, that's yeah. like me holding the website in NiFi. It'll work. Does anyone else endorse that? I do not <laughs> recommend that you treat NiFi like Lisp. Yeah. Yeah, I want to know about the use case before someone is doing that. <laughs> it doesn't seem like a good idea. Use uh, There's many other ways to have values around in NIFA. Yeah. There's one more quick question I'll grab here before we go back. Um, yep. Is there a path to migrate variables in existing data flows and prod to parameters? So the answer is basically yes. So um, parameters are accessed in a similar way to variables were set up. Uh, where variables were a dollar curly brace, parameters are hash curly brace. We stick with our standards around here. Um, there are uh, largely similar methods and approaches you can use for them. So it's pretty much uh, drop and replace. I can't actually think of any cases offhand, Pierre, where it's not just drop and replace, except where parameters have additional features like security sensitive values, right? Yep, correct. I agree. Yeah. So you should anything you can do with a variable, and you should be able to do with a parameter. And if I'm wrong, you can hunt me down, and then I'll fix it. <laughs> cool. Uh, let's 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 go back to to, to the demo. Um, I will try to speed things up a little bit to make sure that we cover all the great stuff uh, that we just talked about. Uh, so. Now I move to the production cluster. You can see it. Uh, you can see it here. Uh, NiFi prod cluster. I just cleaned everything I did before the, uh, the this this session just to start from uh, uh, from something clean. Just to show you how it is when you want to deploy a new flow for the first time, because that's where you are actually going to do most of the manual stuff when you do the first uh, in production deployment of a flow of a new use case because, uh, well, as as we will see it after, it's really uh, easy then to automate deployments and updates of new versions of the flow, but doing the first deployment of the flow can be um, a bit more challenging. So uh, let's do it in the UI, and then uh, we will talk about the, the CLI and what uh, Dan is uh, providing uh, in Python if you prefer Python, which is perfectly fine and, and that's great. 
And also uh, Dan in his uh, repository is providing a lot of uh, out of the box uh, methods, doing a lot of stuff for you. Uh, while if you are using the CLI, it can be uh, well a bit challenging to uh, automate uh, some parts. So anyway, um, if we are on the UI, we want to deploy the flow for the first time. So we just drag and drop a process group. But instead of giving a name, here we see imports. Um, I just want to mention something before, uh, because as I said, when you have one NIFA registry, which is uh, used for both dev and prod, you don't want to let anyone pushing uh, changes from production to uh, the NIFA registry, because this is really bad. Uh, fixing stuff in production and committing from production. I know this happens, but this is bad. So uh, let me create just a process group. Uh, uh, this is bad uh, working in prod. Okay, uh, and here, uh, thanks to the, the the authorizations I set in Apache Ranger on my Knife registry, uh, if I try to start version control here, this will be disabled because I don't have write access to the Knife registry from here, uh, from the production cluster. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, and I strongly recommend to have something like that. So instead, I'm just drag and dropping a process group and I'm doing import. Uh, and here I can see uh, my uh, NIFA registry, the bucket, and then I can use, uh, I can choose the flow I want to check out. So let's see uh, this one. And I said that uh, uh, this version is the version uh, ready to go in production. So let's uh, import this one. So, uh, this is available, but uh, when you import uh, a process group for the first time, this is really the first time you import this version of the flow on, in production, uh, there is quite a few steps to perform. Uh, so first, you want to update the parameters. So if you look at the parameters here, you can see that for the sensitive values, we don't have any value set. That's because in the NIFAR registry, we don't store anything sensitive because we care about uh, security and we don't want any password to be uh, well uh, stolen or to leak on the internet or something. So uh, any sensitive property never uh, leaves NIFA. So when you move your flow from one environment to another, uh, whatever uh, sensitive value you set in the production uh, in the development cluster is not going into the production cluster. However, for all the other parameters, we still see the values from the dev cluster. So where it makes sense, we want to update that. So uh, I don't want to update the listening port. Uh, let me go very quickly. Um, so password, I want to set my password to here. This is a value. Once you apply here, uh, you can't see it anymore. Even if I edit again, you can't see it. So it's only when you set it for the first time. Uh, OK, uh, then I have here uh, my uh, account for production. Uh, the file is in the same location. So if you are, that's also something to keep in mind when you are uh, moving flows from one cluster to another. If your flow rely, if your flow is relying on external files, like, uh, I don't know, uh, hdfsi.xml, uh, external file like this one that is used uh, in, in the uh, geo enriched processor. Uh, if you use, I don't know, uh, key stores, trust stores, things like that, that needs to be, I mean, that are specific to your uh, workflow uh, and you need to move it from one cluster to another, that's something you need to do before uh, deploying your flow. Uh, any file uh, which is a dependency of your flow is not managed by the NIFA registry. That's something we are looking at to have kind of uh, bigger bundles of flows that are including also some of the dependencies um, in addition to the parameters, but that's a uh, long-term roadmap. Anyway, so before the session, I deployed my files, uh, the files on which my flow depends uh, on the NIFI nodes, and it's located at this location. Uh, then the Kafka brokers, uh, let me get that. 
Okay, so here uh, I have my Kafka brokers for the production. Uh, Kafka topic is the same. The schema registry is the same because I'm using uh, a single schema registry, which is in the production cluster. So I just need the key store password. Uh, let me get that here. And I set this here. So that's really the first step, updating the parameters to match what you need in this environment. What's, once it's done, uh, this is going to uh, look at the affected processors. Everything is looking good. And then the next step is uh, starting the uh, controller services. Uh, so you can go to uh, the configuration here, and you can start the controller services. Uh, that's something, again, everything I'm doing here is something you can automate. Um, and you can do all of this using the CLI. We will see it in a minute. You can also uh, do the same with the, uh, the Python library that uh, Dan um, is maintaining. Uh, all of this can be scripted uh, in many ways. Uh, no issue with that. But when you deploy a new use case for the first time, and again, really for the first time in production, uh, you probably want to be careful about automation. Uh, deploying and upgrading to new versions, and that's what we are going to do right after this, uh, is fine. But uh, for the first time, you probably want to do it, let's say, more carefully. So once uh, uh, controller services are started, you can start everything. Uh, this is started. I will start my script here that is sending data but this time to production cluster. Uh, and uh, this is running. That's cool. OK, so now I have my flow here. Uh, I'm trying to go very quickly, but let's let's go back to my dev cluster, OK? Um, and now here, uh, if you remember, for some of the records I'm processing here, uh, some of the values for the CT fields I'm computing are new. Uh, I don't map an IP address to a CT. So in this case, I want to filter out, uh, sorry, I want to filter out uh, the, uh, the records where I didn't find a CD. So in this case, sorry, need to stop that. So here I'm doing an update. So I don't know, someone in the Dustream application, they said, well, uh, it would be better if the data you make available uh, in, in, uh, in Kafka is only when you have some values uh, uh, for uh, for the CT field. So here I'm using the, the record, uh, query record processor. I'm going to uh, specify reader writer, and then I can write um, uh, CT not null. I can write a SQL query to do my filtering. So select star from flow file uh, where CT is not new. That's it. Okay, apply. Here I uh, send CT not new. I'm going to uh, auto terminate failure original here. Um, I'm I have. I like when the design is nice. So here I'm going to start this. Um, and uh, if I start some uh, sending some data here, uh, let's see just uh, that here, if I look at the data, uh, now all of the fields CT should have a value. So again, uh, I only have records where I do have a value for the CT. OK, so now. Um, OK, this is great. I say um, uh, this is ready to go to production, and I'm going to commit local changes. So uh, added a query record to filter out uh, new CT values. And here is the trick. I'm saying in the comment, this is prod ready. OK, and I save this. And now I'm going back to my production cluster. Um, and thanks to all of the automation I uh, put in the background, um, when my UI is going to refresh, uh, I shall see some updates. So uh, refresh. 
did I did uh, I did something? Oh, it's still running here. Just a sec. My dev cluster is complaining. Let me refresh that. Okay, no, this is looking good. So maybe some delays. Okay, here we go. So now here you have a new icon uh, showing this uh, little icon here, saying that the new version of uh, this uh, flow is available, and you can update to a new version of the flow. Um, and things are a bit slow, but uh, in theory, I have some automation in the background that should be uh, doing all of the updates. So it should be doing it. Um, maybe there is uh, something wrong. Let me check very quickly. Uh, Oh yeah, sorry, that's my bad. So actually, let, let me, well, I mean, that's why my automation is not working. That's because I cleaned everything. Uh, let me show you what I did. Um, so let me uh, change the screen I'm sharing. I'm going to go as fast as possible because I realize we are already over time. Uh, screen sharing, stop screen sharing. I need to screen share this instead. So uh, hopefully you should see my screen. So uh, in the NIFAR registry, there is a, a concept of a uh, hook, uh, which is giving you the, the ability to trigger any action you want uh, when there is something happening in the NIFAR registry. Uh, in this case, actually, let, let me uh, do, uh, yeah. Uh, in this case, uh, what I want to do is I want to trigger the update of my flow when I receive an event, which is, uh, create flow version. So basically, I created a new version of my flow. Uh, this is not the first version because I want to do it manually when this is the first time I deploy a flow. And I'm looking at the comments in case I have a prod ready. Uh, and if in the comment, this is, uh, I mean, uh, the, the, the developer is saying this is prod ready, I'm going to automate the deployment uh, in production. Uh, and then I'm using the, the CLI. Uh, here, uh, uh, you can play with it. Uh, there is a lot of options. Uh, as Dan said, there is also the, the Python toolkit. And this is going to update uh, the flow to the latest version. Here, if you want, uh, you can also update uh, or uh, set the values for the uh, new parameters. Uh, this is also an option for you in case you want to retrieve the values of the parameters from, um, I don't know, uh, HashiCorp Vault or external database. That's where you could uh, automate the retrieval of the values for your parameters and set the values to your parameters when a new version of the flow is going into production. Um, so setting the parameters, then starting the controller services as I did manually before, and then start the process group. So. Uh, my script is very simple. Uh, Dan is doing an amazing work uh, with uh, Python where it's uh, everything is ready for you to use. Uh, I'm really bad at Python, so I did this uh, very quick, uh, ugly bash script, which is using uh, a mapping file where I say, well, this is my flow ID. Uh, this is the process group um, uh, associated to uh, this flow in production. So that's actually what I need to update because since I, cr I started from scratch, uh, there is a new uh, process group ID. So let me, uh, uh, Dan, Dan and team, maybe you want to take uh, two or three questions now while I fix my mapping uh, file and we show you the actual automation of it. Sounds legit. Yeah, we got questions. We got people talking about scripting. It's all really good. Uh, do you want to go first, Tim, or shall I? Uh, I don't know where we want to start. Uh, <laughs> there's a bunch of them. There is a bunch. Um, so I'll answer a couple of quick ones that aren't sort of particularly related to anything else. So can you use a schema registry uh, when NiFi and whatnot is built within a Docker container? Uh, the simple answer is yes. So um, you can, uh, if you create, say, a Docker private network, you can attach multiple containers to it. They can address each other via 
host names on the internal Docker DNS service. So we do this a lot for testing uh, NiFi and registry. Uh, they come on pre-built Docker containers. And um, if you look in the NiPy API repo that Pierre is mentioning, I actually use that for all of my testing. So there are Docker Compose file in there under the resources folder to generate both secure and insecure NiFi and registry deployments. And you could add a schema registry one to that. Uh, we provide a schema registry, uh, which we open sourced. The other main popular one that people use is the Confluent one. Uh, there's others around as well. So uh, they're all supported. They all integrate. Just uh, you go and do whichever is best for you. It should work. Um, there was another question around schema registry, which was similar sort of thing. You know, Does it work? Does it integrate? So I think I've sort of answered that as well. Do you want to grab the next one, Tim? Sure. And one other thing, for people who have very minimal schema needs, there is one that you could do within NiFi without having to use anything else. It's the Avro one. It is oh, hard coded. Yeah. Uh, most people just use it for testing, but if you're very limited on run space, you could use it there if your schema is not changing. But I guess it probably will change. Uh, I'll go through a couple of the quick ones here. There's one ask, asking about the NiFi processor execution. Uh, we probably answered this in another place. It's asking if it's event-based or time-based. Uh, what's nice with NiFi is you have the option of deciding, uh, you know, do you want it to be on waiting for something to happen? Do you want to set a cron setting? Do you want it to have it run every second, minute, hour? All that's configurable at each step in a flow, which is really nice. So, yeah, if you want to run it every one minute, you can. If you want it to run when something hits it, like listen, HTTP, doesn't make sense to have that on a timer. That's really mm -hmm. waiting for someone to call in. Same thing as if you're looking at, uh, say, a file to change. You want the file to change. You know that yeah, that's one really thing. typical. So, like, putting NiFi behind a load balancer that receives a ton of UDP traffic uh, maximize availability, get all that throughput. You don't want run, that running on a timer. You want that scale to load. So we totally do that. Um, I think that's similar to another question here about sort of just how does NiFi scale and everything else. And uh, it does. It scales in response to data within the limits of the infrastructure that is available to it. So if you give it no hardware, then it ain't going to do an awful lot. If you give it a ton of hardware, then it will scale up and it will auto balance itself uh, to do that. So it will first try and commit all the data it's received to disk to guarantee it doesn't lose it. And then it will work through its processing DAGs that you've given it. Um, that's in a traditional cluster. And then if you implement it on uh, Kubernetes or some auto scaling service, like uh, we do, like others do, then uh, that'll use up whatever hardware that gets as the pods get spun up and away it goes. So that's pretty handy as well. Um, Pia, I have a couple more questions here, but it uh, looks like you're almost yeah. ready to crack on. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, let's let's uh, let's. Uh, yeah, we're running out of time, so let's finish that demo. Yeah, exactly. Uh, let me do that very quickly. So I just fixed my mapping file uh, in the background, which is really linking uh, my flow ID to the process group ID where I deployed my flow. Uh, so this is fixed. Sorry about that. Um, uh, so I'm going to commit again from the dev cluster. Uh, this time, this is really broad ready. Let's assume that I did something wrong. Uh, like I did. Uh, this is probably already uh, save. So this is going to save a new version. Uh, we can see here, this is the green logo. And if I go to production, um, while data is flowing in, uh, this is going to uh, update uh, the flow. That's also something that is very important. And that's something you want to know about the NIFA registry. That here, we just updated everything without actually uh, um, uh, removing data or or anything. So uh, data is still going through uh, my flow, and we went to uh, the new version of this flow uh, automatically. And this is running. Uh, everything is up to date. Um, if the flow updates from one version to another, requires to uh, remove a relationship where there is some data the update will fail because uh, by default, NiFi is ensuring that there is no data loss. Uh, so the automatic update using the CLI will fail. Um, 
in case the update requires some uh, data removal. So in this case, what you will do is probably uh, stop uh, some of the source processors, let the data drain out or stop the, the parts of the flow where you did uh, very critical changes and then try the update again. Uh, that's where some probably uh, manual care is required. Uh, but other than that, uh, as you can see with uh, uh, 10 lines or 20 lines of code, uh, very poorly written in Bash, uh, you can automate all of this. Um, I won't go into more details. I will stop sharing. I don't know if there are some other questions we want to answer. Then, team, uh, um, I don't have access to the questions. So if you see some questions, uh, let's go. Yeah, we're looking pretty we... good. Um, there's a question here um, about um, dealing with the scope of parameters. So. Um, as you showed earlier, parameter contexts, which is the collection of parameters, are scoped to a process group. Um, and I believe they are still inheritable, aren't they? So um, you would assign it to a process group and then any children of that process group, do they also get to use those parameters as well or do you have to set it each time? Remind me. Right now, you have to set it each time on each process group. Uh, what we are going to work on uh, this year is the concept of uh, composite parameter context where you can uh, uh, mix multiple parameters context that you can attach to your process group and then also look at the, in, uh, at the uh, inheritance of the parameters uh, through a hierarchy of process group. So that's, that's something yeah. coming this year. Yeah, that makes sense to me because I was remembering that variable registry is inherited and it used to cause a lot of confusion amongst users where they weren't sure actually where that variable was set within their stack of nested context. So, yeah, I think that'll be good. So, uh, and since then, the scope is set to the process group. And if you want to change the scope, you just move it to a different process group and away it goes. So I think that answers that question. Um, I think that is actually most of the questions. I was collecting some more from the uh, the other live streaming channels like YouTube and that sort of thing, but I've answered a lot of those in place. One of them was just a generic question about when should you use a funnel? And uh, that's generally useful to people. So um, in NiFi, most of the time, you would uh, set a parameter or a variable uh, inside uh, the configuration of a processor that allows it to address you know multiple things like lots of different ports or lots of different directories. But there's quite a few services that uh, cannot do that, uh, maybe because the underlying library that we use is compiled at execution time, and so it can't dynamically update properties. A good example of this is like a Flume collection service where you have to hard code the port most of the time. So if you had to run five of those in parallel, then you might have five feeds coming out, each with very similar data, but coming from different sources. And so you'd shove those in a funnel, and then it'll come down to a common stream, which is coming from five different sources, of Flume in that case, but it's all going to be treated as the same data because we can simply use the source from Flume as a parameter further down the flow and not have duplicate uh, parallel threads, which is really great for handling your back pressure and your uh, data context and control around that. So yeah, it's a handy little thing only when you need it. And I think that's, um, that is all the main questions that I have got here. Did you pick up any others, Tim? I well, team with the, uh, a monitoring question, so I just want to take this opportunity to, to say that the next uh, live demo I will be doing, so probably uh, in a month or two, will be focused on NiFi monitoring. Uh, so to the question, can we have uh, some uh, uh, performance metrics about each processor? Uh, yes, we can. Uh, uh, there is different ways to extract these metrics and make them available in dashboards and stuff like that, or, or, or be alerted if a processor is not processing, uh, performing uh, efficiently or as expected. Uh, there are ways to do that, uh, mainly using the reporting tasks, um, but there are also, also other ways. Um, so to the answer, uh, yes, uh, everything you can access through the UI is available through the UI, and you also have a lot of data through the reporting task. Yeah. Cool. Um, so we are unfortunately over. So hopefully people who could stick around, thank you very much. And hopefully the extra information was useful. Um, we will go into some more topics the next time we do this. But I think back to you, Pierre, to wrap up. Yes. Uh, so let me just share my screen again very quickly to wrap, to wrap up that. Uh, 
Sure. And let me present again. Here, so, uh, yeah, so, uh, so this slide, is, I mean, or maybe, yeah, actually, no, I'm not showing my screen. <laughs> Never mind, I got it. Uh, so yeah, so uh, you have uh, some resources available uh, on the screen where you are right now uh, for uh, uh, everyone uh, still here with us and thank you for staying over time. Uh, we have uh, some content for you in case you want to know more about Clubera uh, uh, edge management, so everything around uh, MinIFI uh, and edge flow management capabilities. Uh, and we also have some content about flow management. So if you want to look at that, uh, please do. Uh, do so. Uh, I also invite you, regarding what we discussed today, to look at the uh, the GitHub repository that Dan is maintaining. The the Python clients is really amazing. Uh, it's it's automating a lot of stuff for you, making your life much easier. Uh, and Dan is very keen to improve it. So if you have any feedback, uh, please feel free to uh, file pull requests, issues, uh, get in touch with Dan. Um, uh, I'm sure we will uh, make it even better. Uh, thank you for staying with us. Uh, hopefully, this was this was uh, interesting, and uh, see you soon. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone. See you on Slack. <laughs>